Tottenham Hotspur, what can we say about this club? They're a team that doesn't have a lack of talent, but definitely has a lack of trophies. I mean, it's been over 15 years since they last won one. And whilst it's true that under Postacoglu, they do look a much stronger team, there's only one man who can get this cursed football side winning trophies. And guys, I cannot believe what I'm about to say. For the next 10 seasons, I'm taking charge of Tottenham Hotspur. The goal is to end their trophy drop by winning as many trophies as possible and ultimately make them a European powerhouse. But the takeover wheel is back to make my life at Tottenham either way easier or basically impossible. So here we go guys, our journey with Spurs begins now and I can't believe we're doing this guys, but this is the team in season one and as much as it pains me to say, Spurs are stacked. I mean they've got Mickey van der Ven, Romero, Vicario, James Madison, Hyun Min Son. Not to mention really talented youngsters like Archie Gray and of course Wilson Odobert. And of course Mikey Moore who's really showing how good he is this season. It's not even an old side either, only three players over 30 years old man. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, one of them is Hyun Min Sun, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for the most part, guys, the best players in this team are in their mid-20s, which is a really good thing for Spurs' future. And on top of that, we've got 108 million to spend in Season 1. So far, everything about this Tottenham Hotspur side is actually looking solid. But as you can see from the leaderboard, if we want to beat Man United with this Tottenham Hotspur side, we've got to win more than 16 trophies. The question is, though, considering they can't win a trophy to save their lives, Life in real life, can this side actually achieve that in this takeover? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we, guys? But first things first, let's mess around with the tactics. I'm going for the 4 3 3 attacking variation with a short passing build up style and a high line, considering how pacey our centre backs are. As for the player instructions, we are playing a really attacking play style. Our two centre midfielders are box to box, but our wing backs are going to be up and down like a rocket, with our front three and Cam being really high up the pitch. And as for the starting 11, I feel like this is by a mile the strongest team that we've got going into season one obviously there's a couple of things that we could do with improving but that's where the money comes in all 108 million of it to be exact but to be fair we are getting ahead of ourselves because that takeover wheel could take all this money away from us for all we know so here we go let's see what season one has in store for us okay risk slash reward every time you play arsenal and lose they take your best play but if you win you get one of theirs okay i know what it means by risk slash reward this could either go really well or really goddamn badly but the good news is he didn't say anything about a transfer ban we've got all this 108 million to get our team ready to face arsenal this year but looking at the team guys there's only two positions that we really do need to focus on firstly we need a better winger brennan johnson in real life has been killing it but i do not want to take any chances against arsenal and we need a stronger midfielder than papit matar saw again in real life can't fault the guy but this is arsenal we're talking about i mean if we play them twice this year and lose we could lose young Min's son and james madison to them i do not want that to happen so I've not wasted any time, guys. I've strengthened our left winger all by signing Jack Grealish for 45.4 million. He's a fantastic winger and can play in that centre of the park if we need him to. I know he's 28 years old, but we need quality and we need quality now. Which is why I've just spent a further 39.3 million on Adrian Rabio. He's a monster at six foot three, and he's got the perfect stats for that box-to-box -box midfielder type play that we need. And I know that I've been buying for the now, but don't think I forgot about the future. All four of our brightest prospects at Spurs are going out on loan for a couple of years. Believe me, I'm going to try my best to make these guys a pivotal and crucial part of this team going forward. But right now, this is how we've got the team lined up for season one. And quite frankly, I don't give a rat's backside about winning trophies or getting a top four finish. I just do not want to lose against Arsenal. I mean, you guys know I'm no fan of Spurs, but I could not imagine your min son in an Arsenal shit. It just feels wrong. So here we go, guys. It's the moment of truth. It's our first game against Arsenal. The question is, are we going to keep our player? Are they going to... Oh, no! They've got Hyun Min Son! I can't believe it, man. Marino and Havits, within three minutes of each other, win Arsenal the game. Spurs fans, look away. Hyun Min Son is in an Arsenal shirt. What did I tell you, guys? That just does not look right, does it? The good news is we have Solanke in the team. We do have a Charleston, but for me personally, I do prefer Solanke. But our 
next game against the Gunners is massive. We won't lose James Madison if we lose. We'll lose Vicario. And if we lose him, we lose our best keeper. Here's hoping, though, it doesn't come to that. We are against them away from home this time. What's the score going to be? Okay, it's a two-ball draw. We actually get away with not getting our players stolen, but we don't get one of their best players. And it's a damn good job, really, because I'd be taking Bakayo Saka away from Arsenal. I'd be taking their golden boy from them. But, guys, I'm going through the calendar now, and I'm not seeing another game with Arsenal anywhere. So, unless something happens, I'll see you at the end of the season. And, thankfully, we didn't play Arsenal again, but we did get a top four finish in the Premier League. So, unless something happens in the FA Cup, guys, we've got UCL football next year. But I'll tell you what did happen in the FA Cup. Wickham knocked us out in round four. I'm trying not to say, but this would be a damn good reason to say it. City also knocked us out in round four of the Carabao Cup. You see, that isn't so bad, is it? As for the Europa League, we finished second in the league phase, which is pretty damn decent. Well, we got knocked out by Pauk 5-3 on aggregate. I am refraining from saying it. I'm going to try my best not to for this entire video, but no promises. I'll say this, though. Considering we lost our best player in Young Min Son, this team right now isn't looking bad at all. I reckon our takeover with Spurs is going to be pretty damn successful. And just look at these stats, man. Oh, my God. Our front four are menaces in front of goal. Now, granted, this season we didn't win any trophies in true Tottenham Hotspur style of course but we've got another nine years left with this Tottenham Hotspur side and honestly in that time who knows how successful or unsuccessful we might become but before we find out if you're enjoying this takeover so far with Tottenham Hotspur drop this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new so here we go season number two with Spurs and just check out our budget 263 million I don't know why we've been given that much money but I'm definitely not complaining. I mean, the improvements we can make to this team with that kind of money is genuinely staggering when you think about it. We can make these guys the Premier League champions in Season 2. But we can't get ahead of ourselves, guys. That wheel gets to decide what we do or don't do with this money, remember. So without further ado, let's spin the wheel and see what's in store for a season ender. Oh, this doesn't look good. Your third best player in the squad orb is injured for the entirety of this season. Come on, man. Really? So that means Pedro Porro is out completely for Season to so it looks like we're buying a new right back this year as we could also do with improving our midfield a little bit and maybe adding a bit more depth to the team whilst we're at it i mean our best keeper is vicario but if anything happens to him we've got austin and whiteman who was 66 rated they'd be useless but first things first we need a new right back so i spent 60 million on joshua kimmich he's a fantastic player at 30 years old i feel like he's the absolute perfect short term replacement for pedro porro as moving on to the midfield I've spent a further 62.9 million on Ezekiel Palacios. He helped Bayer Leverkusen to an invincible season, so hopefully he can help Tottenham Hotspur win their first trophy in countless years. And the team right now is looking stacked, man. We just need to sort a second-choice keeper out, and we're good to go for season two. And I can't think of anybody better than Jordan Pickford. Premier League experience in abundance. A quality keeper for England. This guy's an absolute beast. And £20 million later, he's now playing for Tottenham Hotspur. Now, granted, we've got £101 million left to spend, but right Right now, I don't feel like we need to spend it. I might live to regret that later, but this team right now is absolutely solid, and so is the bench, to be quite honest. But the question is, guys, is Kimmich and Palacios actually going to help Spurs win their first trophy in God knows how many years? Unfortunately, the answer to that question so far is no. We are third in the league, though, three points above Arsenal. But we're 13 points behind Manchester City, a team, by the way, that very nearly went invincible this season. But we did far better in the FA Cup this time, making it to the semis before losing to Liverpool. Now we made the quarters of the Carabao Cup before once again getting knocked out by City. But it's a bad start in the UCL, guys. We're 24th in the league phase, but we do get playoffs with that position. And we're through to the round of 16 after beating Benfica. But we lose to Atalanta on penalties. Why do I feel like we're just not going to win anything in this takeover with Spurs? I mean, there's no excuse really, guys. Even at this point in the takeover, we should be winning trophies for fun. 
one. I mean, we're certainly scoring for fun. Look at the state of our front four stats, especially Solanke, by the way. 38 goal contributions in 57 games. I was not familiar with your game, lad. The worrying thing is that we've had two good options on that wheel, and this Tottenham Hotspur side has still yet to win a single trophy. So honestly, God help us when we eventually land on a bad option on that wheel, because I do not see that going well for us in any way, shape, or form. So here we go, guys. Season 3 with Tottenham Hotspur. What are you going to give us this time? Oh, this doesn't look good. Bad exchange. Swap your best player for Arsenal's worst. You have got to be kidding me. We already gave them young men so many was our best player. You want us to do that again? And it just gets even worse, guys. Vicario is our best player and Arsenal are getting him for free. Well, technically not, actually. We're getting Charles Sigo Jr. in return. 61 overall. Honestly, that wheel has done me over in season three. And it's officially done, guys. We have got the worst Arsenal player now playing for us. In return as well, we give them our best. And there he is playing for Arsenal, guys. I can't believe it. First John Min son, now Vicario. We may as well have just handed Arsenal the freaking league title. But the wheel didn't say anything about a transfer ban, which means we've got 94 million and I think you guys know what I'm going to do with that money. I'm sorting our replacement keeper out. And I think Diogo Costa is basically perfect. 26, 86 overall. And his contract's expiring too. He's got some insane stats as well, man. Plus, he's got at minimum six years in him as a keeper. We're set long-term-wise in that position now. And there we go. £60 million pounds later, we've signed Diogo Costa on a five-year deal. And granted, we've got money left over. But I don't really want to do anything with that money. Because this team right now is absolutely stacked. And I fully believe it's only a matter of time before we start winning trophies. But remember, guys, 16 is the trophy count to beat. So if we don't start winning trophies this year, we will be in a little bit of trouble with Tottenham Hotspur. And guys, this really isn't looking good. We are third in the Premier League once again. Five points behind Chelsea this time. I don't want to say those two words, but I think you all know what I'm thinking. No FA Cup either as Leeds have knocked us out. And Hull knock us out of the Carabao Cup. Oh my God. Season three's a Dud. But the Champions League does look a little bit more promising. We are ninth in the league phase and we go to the playoffs. Where we've smashed RB Leipzig 6-3. And we've smashed Napoli in the round of 16. And we've beaten Real Madrid in the quarters. And we've beaten Sporting in the semis. Guys, there's no way we win the Champions League before any other trophy, surely. But that's exactly what we've done. We've beaten Atletico 1-0 in the final. Spurs are somehow the best team in the world. I mean, you look at these stats, guys, and it's not that surprising when you think about it. But how have we won the UCL before any other trophy? And this is even after getting rid of Vicario. But Diogo Costa was the man to step up to the plate. I'm actually quite buzzed with that you know this Tottenham Hotspur side pulled out all the stops in the Champions League and it paid off the question is though going forward will they be able to keep this going well I guess we're about to find out as season four kicks off by spinning the wheel okay plus three this is good all your bench players get a plus three in their rating but you have a transfer ban you know what I'll take that I mean look at our bench now for goodness sake in fact I think a couple of our bench players can now go into the starting 11 and I'm right you know Saw's in the midfield now over Rabio and Poros in the team over Kimmich. It is a shame we've got all this money that we can't spend, but to be fair, increasing the ratings of all of our bench plays is definitely worth more than what this could get us. The question is now though, guys, how is this Tottenham Hotspur side going to do in Season 4? Guys, I can't believe it. We lost the Premier League title by two goals. How much closer can we get to the title without winning it? I really want to say those two words right now, but I feel like the correct word is actually unlucky at this point. Still no FA Cup either as we crashed out in round six. And Luton Town knocked us out of the Carabao Cup. I don't understand how we can do so poorly in the FA and Carabao Cup with how good our team is. And we haven't done well in Europe either. We're 13th in the UCL league phase. We are in the playoffs though. But we get annihilated by PSV 3-1. What is going on in season four may I ask? I mean the team is absolutely insane and if anything the wheel helped us massively improve it without spending a penny so what's gone wrong? I mean it's definitely not for a lack of scoring goals. Our front four are absolutely insane. Look at Solanke, 45 goal contributions in 55 games. He's a baller. I don't know what more we can do at this point, guys. I just hope this team gets its stuff together going forward. Otherwise, that leaderboard is going to look embarrassing by the end of this video. I'm kind of hoping the wheel helps us out in season five because we desperately need it. Okay, maximum potential. Choose three players and make their overalls their max potential. That is actually really good because we've got 139 million 
to spend after we sort those three players out, man. That is huge for Spurs. The question is, though, guys, as I go through the entire team, who on earth do I help max out their potential? Well, I think the first player has to be Lucas Bergvall because I've just gone on foot with his projected potential is 87. Marky Moore's the second player because he's 78 rated now at 20. His potential is actually 85. And I think the third player was kind of obvious, wasn't it? Archie Gray, 81 overall now at 22, but his potential is actually 87. And there we go. Bergvall's now 87 rated. Archie Gray's 87 rated. And Marky Moore's 85 rated at 20 years old, by the way. That's disgusting. We've definitely got our backup for Grealish when he eventually goes down in rating. But that does beg the question, doesn't it? Where do we put this 139 million? I mean, granted, our best players aren't exactly the youngest at the minute, but we've basically got backup for every single position at this point. I mean, Velez is our backup for Solanke. Our midfield depth's pretty damn insane. And Wilson Odubert and Marky Moore are our backups for Kulisevsky and, of course, Grealish. But there is one player we don't have backup for, James Madison. I mean, he's definitely one of the best cams in the world at this point, but he's almost getting to that age now where he's going to start dropping an overall. I mean, right now, he stats are looking safe and sound, but this time next year, I don't think they will be. So I'm going all out on his eventual replacement, Arda Gula, who's played for Bournemouth of all teams. But as you can see, he's only 23 and already that good. I can't think of anybody better to be an eventual replacement for Madis. And there we go. After spending a whopping 103 million, we've made Arda Gula a Tottenham Hotspur player. He will be a bench warmer for now, but I reckon in the later part of this takeover, he's going to be a crucial part of Spurs' success. As this is the team at the halfway point of this takeover, and I'll level with you lot, if we don't start winning trophies from right now, this Spurs team is going to get embarrassed. Guys, I don't know what to say at this point. We've lost the title once again by finishing second. I mean, I feel like those two words are definitely appropriate for this case. They are the bottle jobs. I don't know how we keep doing this, man. It's just sad at this point. And we've still not won the FA Cup. Ipswich knocked us out in the freaking semis. But we finally won the Carabao Cup. Oh my god, it's about damn time really, isn't it? And we've had a great showing in the UCL League phase, man. I'm praying that we've won this again. We need it at this point. And we have. We smashed AC Milan in the final. Oh my god, finally we won a double with Spurs. But let's be honest, if this team couldn't do it, I mean, we've got absolutely no hope, have we? But look at these stats again, man. To be fair, look at Solanke again. 50 goal contributions in 63 games. That is absolutely insane. But as you can see from the leaderboard, with us only winning three trophies, we've got so much work to do for the remainder of this takeover if we don't want to get embarrassed. So let's try our best to make sure that simply doesn't happen. Okay, this is a good step. Game changer. Make a player of your choice. 99 rated, but make no signings. I don't care about no signings. That actually is a game changer. We can make any one of our players in this team a 99 overall player. We've got to be tactical with this. We've still got five years left, remember, in charge of Spurs. And that's given me a light bulb moment, guys, because I'm looking through our highest rated players in our team, and I've noticed one player's got to that age now where he's dropping in rating. And that is Jack Grealish. He's 33 years old now, and as you can see, his stats are going down, which means I'm making Mikey Moore 99 overall. I mean, he's only 21. He's going to be here till the end of this takeover, and then and just like that, guys, we've got our Jack Grealish replacement. As this is what the team looks like with Mikey Moore in it. Ladies and gentlemen, if we do not win the Premier League this year with a 99 rated player on the left hand side of the pitch, I officially give up. Well, it's about damn time, isn't it? We finally won the Premier League with Tottenham Hotspur. It only took us six years. And we had to do it with 90 points as well. Also, we're a close second with 85. Still no FA Cup though, as Newcastle knocked us out in round four. But we've won the Carabao Cup, so that's trophy number two of season six. We've also won the Super Cup as well. That's the treble. And it's looking good for us in the UCL. We are fourth in the league phase. Could you imagine if we win this back to back? Well, that's exactly what we've done beating Athletic Bilbao 1-0. Guys, that's four trophies for season six. But you look at these stats and it's not that surprising. Solanke, Moore and Kulusevski came in clutch this year. It looks like we finally built some momentum with this Tottenham Hotspur side. We just need to keep this going now. But will the wheel let us is the question. There's three bad ones on here and we've landed on one. The board want you to not sign any players this season but raise 100 million instead to help them out. <laughs> 
My god, it's always something to do with money whenever the wheel hits us. But the board do need help, guys. We've got no money in our budget, so it looks like one way or another, we're going to have to raise £100 million. The good news, however, guys, we've got an absolutely insane amount of talent that we can just get rid of because our depth is literally that good. So here are all the players I've put on the transfer list. I'm not selling all of these players, though. I'm just going to sell enough of them to make £100 million. Once that's sorted, however i will be putting the rest of them back onto the bench or in the reserves and just like that 100 million is achieved i've sold all four of these plays but to be fair looking at the amounts i've sold them for i might have sold a bit more than 100 million well i was right guys we've got 129 million for the board i'm sure they won't mind an extra 29 now but remember we do have a transfer ban so there's literally nothing i can do to improve this team the only thing i can do is hope that we do what we did last year but guys we bottled the premier league title we're second in in the league for like the third time in this takeover that's actually mental when you think about it but we have won the community shield battering united in the process still no fa cup though as blackburn knock us out in round six genuinely are we ever gonna win this competition we have won the carabao cup though so that's the double we've also won the super cup that's three and we've won the champions league ladies and gentlemen we've got four trophies back to back and i think it's down to mikey moore and kulusevsky man them pair really stepped up to the plate man solanke's had his first off season since this takeover began and as we head into our last three years in charge of Spurs, we are only five points beyond Manchester United on the leaderboard. But can this Tottenham Hotspur side keep their momentum going till the end of this takeover, or will they do what they do best in real life and bottle it? Well, let's find out, guys, as we're spinning the wheel for season number eight. It's another bad one. Bad recruitment. Make one signing. The worst player in the league. Oh, my God. Nah, this wheel's got to inform me at this point. The worst thing is, we've got 124 million to spend. There's a lot we could have done with that kind of dollar. But the wheel has spoken, guys. We've got to go through every single Premier League player, figure out who the worst player is in the league, and then go ahead and sign them. And guys, I've unfortunately found him. Arthur Armstrong is the worst Premier League player, a goalkeeper from Brentford. He'll cost a max 420k as well. What a freaking waste of a signing. But like I've just said, guys, the wheel has spoken, and for that reason, we've just signed Arthur Armstrong. And with that, the team looks absolutely no different going into Season 8. And if this side can win the treble, or at the very least a double, we'll be looking pretty damn solid going into the final two seasons of this takeover. And this is a phenomenal start. We are Premier League champions for the second time with Spurs. 12 points ahead of United as well. That's pretty impressive. No FA Cup win, though, as Fulham knock us out in Round 6. And we don't win the Carabao Cup either. But we do go on to win the Super Cup, so that's Trophy number two. But Juve knock us out in the round of 16 in the Champions League. That could have been the icing on the cake for season eight. Gotta say though, these stats are pretty damn impressive. Even with some of our best players like Solanke and Kulu being in their early 30s now. Now, despite us bottling the Champions League, it's still been a pretty successful year for this Tottenham Hotspur side. But that wheel needs to be on our side next year because if it isn't, it might just be game over. So let's find out what we're going to get, guys. It's free pass or rivals it's free pass beautiful we can do what we want that's exactly what we needed it's disappointing that we don't have more than 126 million to spend but i suppose we'll have to make do with it the problem is now that we do have a couple of our best players in the team who are now in their early 30s we all know what that means but this does bring up an issue guys because the likes of kulisevsky and pedro paro are literally the best in the world in their position at this point and given the fact we've only got 126 million to spend it's not a case of of how many signings we can make it to case of which position do we buy for but i think i've made my mind up on that guys i think we need a better center back in place of christian romero now i mean you guys know my view a strong defense is more important than a strong attack and to be fair our front three are still banging goals in for fun but guys i have hit the jackpot 92 rated justin kuipers from newcastle united i mean his contract's running out and he's literally one of the best center backs in the world as you can clearly see and because his contract is running out we can 
can afford him. And there we go. We've just signed him on a five-year deal for a whopping 110 million. And just also look at the state of this team now, man. This has got to be the strongest team in the world at this point. And I'm just putting this out there. If we get a treble or at the very least a double again, we are putting United on notice on that leaderboard. And this is a phenomenal start. We are once again the best team in England, but this time by a large point margin, man. No one even came close. We've also beaten United to win the Community Shield. That's trophy number two. But Brentford knocks out straight away in the FA Cup. How have we had more success in the Carabao Cup than the FA Cup? Saying that, we only made the quarters of the Carabao Cup this time. But we've won the Champions League. Oh my God, we've got the treble, ladies and gents. But looking at the stats, it's really not surprising. Mikey Moore, Kulisevsky, Solanke coming in clutch. But that treble puts us level on trophies with United on the leaderboard. All we need is one more trophy in season 10 and Spurs go top. The question is though, guys, will this Tottenham Hotspur side be able to do it or are they going to bottle it? Well, we're about to find out as we spin the wheel for the 10th and final time in this takeover. What are we doing? Give your three best players to Arsenal, West Ham and Chelsea. You choose who goes here and oh yeah, transfer ban. Oh my God, this could legitimately ruin season 10. We've got to give Mikey Moore, Diogo Costa and Mickey van der Ven to West Ham, Chelsea and Arsenal. Oh my God, we're basically throwing every chance we got at winning trophies away. I can't believe we've got to give a 99 rated player away, man. That is a massive blow. And we've got 129 million that we aren't allowed to spend as well, guys. We really have been shafted in season 10 haven't we but we can't escape it guys we've got to give these three players to arsenal chelsea and west ham it's just a case of figuring out who to send where well guys i may be mind up mikey moore has gone to west ham united out of the three teams i feel like west ham united are the weakest so this kind of just made sense i also sent mickey van der ven to arsenal and diogo costa to chelsea there's no real reason behind this it's just a case of flipping a coin really but one thing's for certain we're definitely gonna miss these three having said that though this team isn't looking Looking bad, all things considered. I mean, we do have a near 40 year old keeper in goal, but aside from that, we are all right. Just remember, though, we just need to win one trophy for this Tottenham Hotspur side to go top of the leaderboard. But with a 74 rated keeper in between the sticks, is that even possible? I'll be real, I don't think it is. We just about scraped survival. I don't even understand how we pulled that off, man. Same goal difference in points as Legion United. That is nuts. No surprise here, we don't win the FA Cup either. But we saw somehow make the semis of the Carabao Cup. That actually does fill me with a bit of hope. But we get knocked out in the round of 16 in the Champions League. Okay, there's two more competitions left. The Community Shield and Super Cup. We just need one trophy and we top Man United on the leaderboard. And we've actually done it. We've beaten Burnley in the FA Community Shield final on penalties. Spears go top of the leaderboard. And they top it by two points as we beat Newcastle in the Super Cup as well. I cannot believe we've done that with a 40-year-old Jordan Pick in goal. I mean, look at these stats. They're by a mile the worst we've had so far in this entire takeover, but somehow we've won the double still. And this is a final look at the Tottenham Hotspur side in this takeover. I'm actually gobsmacked. I thought for sure they'd have bottled it. But they didn't. Solanke is the overall top goal scorer in this takeover. Kulisevsky's their top assist. And overall, they won 18 trophies. And as you can see, it's official. Spurs go top of the leaderboard. But the question is, guys, will they be there this time next week after the next takeover. You'll have to tune in and find out as that's where we're ending this video. If you have enjoyed it and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave this vid a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you're new. And if you want to watch more content from me, click right here because YouTube recommends you watch this.